uh, the president of RSPCA uh, um, Australia, <laughs> Arlene Thumpkin. I'll just take these off so I can actually see what I've got written in front of me and I'll just assume that all of you are still awake and smiling. What a fantastic opportunity to be here today and officiate the introduction for Hugh's talk after me. I think we've had, as people would agree, a brilliant start to the scientific seminar today and many of you sitting out there will obviously know Hugh better than I and probably have worked with Hugh in the animal welfare sphere for a number of years. But I think that in every field, as we know, there are leaders. People who strive to carve out new paths and pioneer change in ideology and I think importantly from Hugh's point of view too, in practice. And I think you would all agree with me that Dr Hugh Worth is one of those rare individuals and he has really paved the way for RSPCA in Australia and can look, I think, with immense pride on his ongoing legacy for animal welfare, not only locally but nationally and internationally. He has been very fortunate to be able to invest the considerable amount of time, effort, energy and expertise into his driving lifelong passion of animal welfare. I do understand he has a bit of a passion for flying. Um, both at home and internationally, I think he would be able to see that he has made a qualitative difference to the millions of lives of animals across, as Bitter pointed out in her introduction this morning, many species. And that will be an ongoing legacy. And I think that's something where, as Bitter pointed out, we despair about animal welfare at an Australian government platform. And we all go through troughs and peaks, I think, across the political landscape. But we also can be comforted by the fact that the leaders in animal welfare are not just those contained now within government, or are we relying just on organisations such as RSPCA. But we have grown partnerships and disperse that leadership across our partners, for example, like Coles. The group that spoke about the camels. I mean, what a very brave thing for someone to do. I think that's brilliant. So I think Hugh can see that he has really contributed and pushed and asked questions about raising those issues for us. His long and distinguished career, as Bitter pointed out this morning, started in the 60s in Victoria as a local vet. He moved to Melbourne not long after that, a couple of years later, became a junior member on the board and then took on the role of the president of the RSPCA Victoria Board, a position he currently holds. In addition to that, um, that relationship then blossomed and after about 50 years, I think it is, a bit of pointed out, nearly five decades, um, there are many things that Hugh, I think, can see he has been instrumental in shaping He's held key roles at both national and state, as we're aware, as well as international. And you know, he's been integral in his involvement with Whisper over many, many years is also something of which he is very proud, I'm sure. Under his leadership in Victoria, the society tackled countless animal welfare issues, helped to achieve significant improvements, banning of tail docking. I mean, some of us probably just accept now when we see a boxer bobbing down the road with its tail, that's the way it's always been. But I think that was a, a long fought change and something that seems so small. But as Paul, I think, pointed out in his talk earlier today, when you see the contrasting picture between the animals in Victor the, the horses in Victorian England and the contemporary pictures of the horses being whipped, it's not an easy thing. Change takes a very long time in the minds and hearts of people. I think he also has been um, instrumental in raising the profile of the usefulness of campaigns and we all use quite commonly now the word about raising awareness of animal welfare. That wasn't necessarily the case, I think, when Hugh probably first became involved with RSPCA. He's also seen uh, overseen significant changes with the opening of the Education Centre to drive change in attitudes and behaviours and that's also a theme you'll see recurring in now the very contemporary approach to what is a veterinary science curriculum. He's also, I think, seen major structural change in government and governance changes, not only at his own local level, but also from the national agenda. As far as the national agenda is concerned, you may all be aware, and I think Bitter indicated that at the very beginning, Hugh played a very pivotal role in the creation of RSPCA Australia. 
at the time of the issue of live export, which many of us probably think is quite contemporary, although looking across the audience, I'm sure there are people who've been around since that was first mooted, and Bitter can remind me that's a few decades, and we're still, we're still talking about it. And I think we are still seeing some distance travel, but we certainly haven't reached where we would like to reach. But it was certainly that that, that gave Genesis to the conversation and understanding that at a national level you need to have a seat at the table, if there is a table. <laughs> but you do need to have that voice. And I think one of the things that Hugh said to me last night when I was talking with him was that you have to continue. You don't let the defeats wear you down. You don't let the disappointments wear you down. You focus on really great things that you've achieved and you work to continue that. So, you know, governments come and go. People in the head of organisations come and go and hopefully at some point someone comes along who will pick up that challenge and really take on that responsibility that we all have as members of a society that's really quite privileged to make a difference in animal welfare. The formation of RSPCA Australia, uh, when people voted to do that in March of 1980, I think was a significant watershed. The other thing that I think people really don't possibly understand is that Dr Worth, as Bitter also pointed out earlier, has spent many, many hours across those 50 years donating his time, skills, expertise and energy, the mental energy to keep going, that fortitude and commitment to make sure that we are making a difference in the lives of animals. Dr Worth has been recognised for his outstanding commitments in a, number of, in a number of ways. He has received a number of awards, membership of the Austra Order of Australia in 1985, Victorian of the Year in 1997, the year in which he gave Bitter her job, the Massachusetts SPA George T. Uh, Angle Humanitarian Award and, of course, an honorary doctor at the University of Melbourne in veterinary science. Community understanding of animal welfare as well as political and industry, industry recognition of its importance and why it does matter, has changed markedly since Hugh started with RSPCA, since he probably graduated from vet science. Dr Worth once said he hoped to be remembered as a veterinarian who was true to the principles of veterinary science and I found that discussion about taking an oath once you graduated this morning an interesting statement that that needs to be up front. You need to be making a public statement and a professional commitment. Anyway, he had said that a veterinarian, he wanted to be rem remembered as a veterinarian who was true to the principles of veterinary science and made a difference to the welfare of animals. I think most of us sitting here and I can see head nodding would agree that he has certainly achieved that and achieved that on a whole range of platforms not just in the field of veterinary science. In honour of this remarkable contribution for Hugh, I know our board and many of us considered what would be a meaningful way to acknowledge and thank Dr Worth for his lifetime commitment to animal welfare. And in talking with Hugh last night, I think he would agree that it is a meaningful statement and a public acknowledgement of his commitment that we are going to have the Hugh Worth Future Leader in Animal Welfare Award. And it's, it's a great privilege that he will be the one giving the inaugural oration today. And for many years forward, for those people who enter these and who attend our scientific seminars, you know, there will be the mention of that person and then there will be an understanding and acknowledgement of what that commitment has been across time. The intention is for the awardee to present the oration at this seminar into the future and also to make known on the website not only the awardee but also the people who were shortlisted. I think that in Hugh's oration that he will give us now, he will spend I think a considerable amount of time talking about his belief in a life worth living. And I was very heartened to understand with that one welfare it's about a life worth living where we all, as members of an environment or a community or a society, take that responsibility of why, life, why welfare matters. And the discussion around the group who are working, working with the camels, and as Jan said, well, it just matters. I think that shows that you've transcended from a particular point of understanding and ability to put those practices um, into effect where you, you don't 
have to think about it, it becomes a way you think and value and look at the world. So hopefully um, we won't need to have future discussions about why it matters. We'll be doing future discussions about how better we can do it. So thank you and uh, congratulations to you and I sincerely um, am privileged to have been your successor in some small way and taken on your mantle. Only a very small part of that mantle though, of that amazing uh, compendium of successes you've had in animal welfare. Thank you. Madam President, ladies and gentlemen, I feel very privileged to have an award like this named after me. Not because it is a recognition of whatever I might have done in the past, but because it allows me to be part of the future. It is very humbling to think that I might in some small way offer a degree of inspiration and recognition to a future leader in the field of animal welfare. That this ward gives someone a platform from which they can share their vision for improving animal welfare in Australia and providing animals with a life worth living is a very exciting prospect. I hope that it becomes as sought after as a Logie or an Emmy <laughs> or an Oscar. I simply believe it should be known as a Huey. <laughs> I can think of no better cause to be associated with than simply making an animal's life worth living. Ever since I made the decision to become a vet and be an advocate for animals, they've done nothing but make my own life worth living. They have given me so much. Animals have shown me unconditional love. They've shown me compassion. They've made me laugh. And they've made me cry. I could not imagine my life without them. And I like to think that there are at least one or two animals that I have presently at home that couldn't imagine their lives without me. They help make life worth living. I believe that they do that for all of us. Everyone's life is made better by animals. From the beautiful animals that provide us with companionship to the amazing animals that fill us with awe to the surprising animals that perplex and confuse us. Even if your only real contact with an animal is laughing at grumpy cat on the internet, then animals are contributing to your quality of life. They allow us to feel and experience all of the emotions that define us as human beings. That alone makes life worth living in my book. What do we do for them? Not enough. What should we do for them? The same thing, of course, that they do for us make their lives worth living too. We can do that on a personal level by showing them the same love and compassion they show us, by sharing their joy, their sadness, by being there for them. We can do it as an animal welfare advocate by continuing to educate our fellow Australians about the importance of animals and the valuable part they have to play in our society. We can do that as animal health professionals by further developing the principles and concepts of animal husbandry and make them an integral part of our farms, our food chains and our conservation efforts. We can do that. We should do that. Most people want to do that. That is the change that I've seen in my lifetime. 
When I first announced my intention to become a vet, my parents were horrified. It wasn't considered a real medicine or even scientifically based, and it wasn't valued the way it is today. I might as well have told them I wanted to be a pet food taster. <laughs> my parents rolled their eyes and hoped that I would grow out of it. But I didn't grow out of it. I embraced it. And over the years, my parents, my siblings, my friends, to a lesser or greater degree, all came to embrace it as well. Bit by bit, they came to a better understanding the human-animal bond. Bit by bit, all Australians have done the same. In my lifetime, there has been a revolution in the way we as a community treat our pets and other animals. Australians are more prepared than ever before to take up the broader cause of animals. We have moved from treating our animals as chattels to be used and abused to an emerging recognition that compassionate care for animals is our fundamental human responsibility and every animal's deserved and basic right. We have moved towards a world where animal welfare matters and animal cruelty is abhorred. By showing compassionate care for animals, we make a meaningful contribution to an, a an animal's health, welfare and physical and psychological well-being. Farmers, ranchers, animal trainers, animal scientists, dog and cat breeders, veterinarians, zookeepers and others who live and work with animals have all started adopting animal welfare policies, practices and programs. Every one of us has an opportunity to do the same and help make animals' lives worth living. In the process, we enrich our own. We can all do that. We should all do that. We will do it. For me, the human-animal bond is everything. I cannot imagine a world without animals and I'm confident that I will never have to. I remain positive about the future of animal welfare in Australia and thanks to you all and the Huey, I know that I still have a small part to play in that future. Thank you for this honour. Thank you for allowing me to continue to be a part of making animal lives worth living. Thank you for making me feel that my own life has been worthwhile. <laughs>